Hey guys, this is Danny Boys. So this is the final video of this series, the final episode. This is the finale where we survive and ultimately blow up the Reaper. So I will just let the gameplay roll while I talk about something. I totally forgot, you know, I just spent a huge portion of the last video complaining about tech armor, and I really did not go into how I would actually change it and make it better. You know, if you're going to go through the trouble of bitching about something, in order for it to be constructive feedback, you need to actually give some ideas of how you would change it, how you'd make it better. Well, I actually have quite a few ideas of how I would change tech armor. As it stands, it is... it's just boring. So, personally, I feel like the other signature powers of the other classes, I feel like they change up the gameplay far more than tech armor does and also just they evolve in more interesting ways over time. Some more so than others, admittedly. But, talking about the Sentinel, there's a lot of different things you could do. For one thing, I think just... I mentioned this, I think, in a previous video, but... Just baked into their melee attack, they should be able to take on the attributes of whatever ammo power they're using. Just like when you amplify concussive shot with an ammo power, let them amplify their melee attack with a concussive power. Or rather, with an ammo power. So say you have cryo ammo, your melee attack freezes. And this should have a 100% chance of activation. So whenever you melee, whenever you heavy melee, or maybe even just melee, not totally sure about that, would have to actually test that, because, you know, just your regular melee might be overpowered, but whenever you melee and you have cryo ammo, it freezes. Whenever, or if you have incendiary ammo, it lights them on fire. If you have armor-piercing ammo, your melee attack completely bypasses armor, possibly all defenses, but allow it to just completely bypass probably all defenses. So if they, you have a shielded opponent and you heavy melee them, you completely bypass their shields and go straight for the red bar. So if you have enough melee bonuses, you have enough armor pieces and whatever, you have points in fitness that allow you to one-shot their red bar, you just totally one-shot them and ignore their defenses. If you have warp ammo, give it like a warp effect. Maybe when you hit them, it lifts them, or it knocks them down, or something like that. It causes even just a warp effect. It does damage over time. And otherwise, what does that leave? Cryo, incendiary, armor piercing, disruptor ammo. Just make disruptor ammo do extra damage against shields, and... Maybe once they're down to red bar, it holds them in place, it just zaps them in place. So, and that that's just independent of tech armor. That's just something special for the for the Sentinel, because their melee attack is too boring compared to the other class's melee attacks. It's just, it's boring. Or if you don't like that idea, then their melee attack should express that they are both part biotic and also part tech. One hand should be the tech blade, the other hand should be a warp effect. And just combine them how you will. Stab them in the face with the one hand, and then follow through with a biotic attack. Lift them in the air, or throw them down, or whatever. Maybe even a reeve effect from the pre- not from this game, from the previous game. Maybe- or even from this game, just built-in damage reduction, though I think that's boring. Perhaps it heals you. It's a lifesteal attack. Stab them in the face and eat their brains. I don't know. But anyway, that's the melee attack. As far as tech armor goes, I would say there's a lot of things you could do that are far more interesting than just what it currently does. For one thing, for its detonation effect, you could just make it as it was in Mass Effect 2, just by default, to give it the huge radius, so even if you're back shooting farther away, this was, the huge radius was, and I don't usually mention this, but it, it was from, I think he died or something. Why? Let me, let me sink kill you. Won't let me. Bugged. Anyway, when you evolved tech armor to assault armor, it gave it a huge radius, I believe, at least that's what I remember. It gave it a huge radius and made it do more damage and knock enemies down and whatever. Make that the basic detonation effect of tech armor in this game, for one thing. That's one way you could do it. That'd be the easy way, and would, at least if nothing else, make it far better and more viable, because it would really benefit melee sentinels, it would really benefit shooty sentinels, because just damage, it's supplemental damage wherever you are, sort of thing. Also, it really shouldn't trigger a cooldown when you detonate tech armor. It makes it really prohibitive to do so. It, it, as it stands, you're almost always better off doing something else, if not always. I don't want to use an absolute like always, but I have yet to come across an, uh, a fight where I thought, oh man, if I had just detonated tech armor, that would have been so much better, more interesting, or more fun, or just easier. It just it doesn't really work that way. I, there's always something else I could use for my, for my cooldown, my global cooldown. There's that. In addition to that, I would say you could just totally change the power, and I know that they're hesitant to do this because players who really like the way tech armor operated in Mass Effect 2 
aren't going to want the power entirely changed. They really haven't totally changed any powers, any signature powers from the previous game that they're unrecognizable in this game. But to that, I would also say Barrier is pretty similar to Tech Armor in the previous game, at least in terms of its crowd control effect and what have you. So you would still have Barrier if you really didn't like how Tech Armor changed. But personally, I think it should definitely change. I think it should have dramatic effects when you evolve it that make it fundamentally different. And there's a few things you could do. I think my favorite idea for a max evolution would just be... This would be one idea. How about for its max evolution? So you have two choices. One option gives you a second shield. Just entirely, it's a second shield. It stacks on top of your regular shield, so enemies not only have to break through your one shield, but they also have to break through your second shield. So no more of this weird damage protection sort of thing that's really abstract and hard for players to understand and hard to really test and see if, in effect, just straight up, two shields, one breaks, then the other breaks, and then they go down to your health bar. Now that might be overpowered. I don't really know. I'm hesitant to think that it would be, simply because Vanguards have like 15 shields. They get another shield every single time they charge. So. Granted, Vanguards, Vanguards also have to be close to do that, so mm, maybe not a the second shield isn't as powerful as your first shield. Maybe it's a second shield, but it's half effectiveness, half the effectiveness of your first shield. Something like that. That could be one evolution. So that'd be like the defensive evolution. The second evolution, and the evolution that I think would be even cooler, and I think is an even better idea. How about this? How about when you fully evolve tech armor, it allows you to have a second weapon. It allows you to have one weapon in one hand and one weapon in the other hand. Why not that? And that is hard to balance and hard to implement, but say it's something like there's weight restrictions, like the weapons can only weigh so much to be used in your second hand just because they're really heavy weapons like sniper rifles are too heavy to wield in one hand. Something like that. And it wouldn't actually use, like, it, it would... You couldn't pick and choose. It's a duplicate of the weapon you're currently using. So you can't use a Widow in one hand or something and a Revenant in the other hand. Or a Widow in one hand and a Saber in the other, or, or whatever. You know, stuff like that. It has to be just a duplicate of your current weapon. And it creates... It doesn't actually give... You don't just whip out a second pistol or something. It creates a holographic representation of it. So it's a holographic representation. In the same color and the same graphical style of the current tech armor. So you have your, say you have a phalanx in one hand, then you have a holographic phalanx in the other hand. And again, for balance purposes, say it doesn't benefit from ammo powers, maybe, or it doesn't, it doesn't benefit from mods, perhaps. It's just the base weapon. Or maybe that wouldn't even be necessary. I don't know. I mean, maybe that wouldn't be necessary. I'm just saying, you know, we do need to keep things balanced, so that's something you could do. As well, it would never run out of ammo, it's a holographic thing, so it doesn't have to be reloaded. You're only reloading one weapon, and you can't fire them independently, it's just whenever you fire the one weapon, it automatically fires the second weapon. So that keeps things simple, you don't have to develop entirely separate systems for it. It's just additional damage sort of thing. As well, maybe you could have it... Rather than shooting regular bullets, it could shoot special, like, tech bullets, maybe, that have their own unique effect as well, to make it more interesting. Or... Maybe there's a detonation effect. You can detonate that second weapon, and it has some effect as well. If you want to stick to tech detonations, you want to stick to just a detonation effect, well, how about, and I don't know if this is currently true, but what if... When you detonate armor, it can set off... And yeah, I died. I just... I'm not really going to talk about the gameplay, because this idea... It's probably going to take the entire video, but I'm, you'll just see bad things happen to me at times. I included my deaths. Anyway, I don't know if this is currently how it works, but oh, one thing I will say is I used the Hydra Missile Launcher on the first wave against the first two Banshees. In retrospect, I would save the Hydra Missile Launcher for the very last wave when the three Banshees come, blow up one Banshee, and then it makes it la the next two Banshees far more manageable. That's what I think I will do from now on. Just suck it up, I'll just suck it up and deal with the first two Banshees and just take it really slowly and cautiously and then use the Hydra and save it for the last wave. Anyway, back to what we were talking about. I don't know if Tech Armor's detonation can currently set off by, or rather, Tech Detonations. I don't know if if you have a bunch of cryoblasted enemies around you, if the Tech Armor's detonation will make them all blow up. Or if they're all lit on fire, if it'll make them blow up in that sort of Tech Detonation or whatever. If that's not the case, make it so it is. Also make it do dramatically more damage. Also, in addition to that, how about it doesn't just detonate once, it has pulsing detonations. It detonates a few times, or something. 
And on the final detonation it does, it has the largest range and it does the most damage. Like maybe the first detonation has a short range, the second detonation has a medium range, and the third detonation has a large range, or maybe just two detonations, something like that. Just two detonations, one short range and then one much larger range. And it does more damage or something like that. It just needs to be buffed in that respect. And again, I know that the power is more powerful in multiplayer. I don't know exactly how, I haven't played with it yet. But just bear with me. Something else you could do. Now, the Sentinel is a mixture of tech and biotic. Why is that not representative in tech armor? Why aren't the evolutions... Why not have one tree of evolutions focus more on biotics, and the other tree of evolutions focus more on tech? So, you could have one tree... You could have a Sentinel that wants to specialize in biotics, you could have a Sentinel that wants to specialize in tech, or you could have a Sentinel that mixes and matches and uses both. Something like that. Now, as per the exact effects, I don't really know, I'd have to think more about it, but just as a baseline. Have that more representative in the class, in tech armor. You could totally change it again and make tech armor more like power armor. You know, more like actual... What's the word? Just kind of like Boba Fett armor, bounty hunter armor. You know, it actually has built-in sort of effects. Built-in... Maybe make it powers within powers. Like, you spec into tech armor, you spec into a certain evolution, and then you get another power that you can use because of that, because it's one part of your of your tech armor. It's like a modular sort of thing. Like, say... And some could be passive, some could be active. You know like Defense Drone, when you use Defense Drone? Defense Drone just flies about you and passively sort of zaps enemies. Well, how about you get a minigun attachment on your shoulder, or a rocket launcher or something on your shoulder, that just passively shoots bullets or rockets or whatever at enemies, and just make it some supplemental damage. We're not talking something that will just carry you along, like you don't need to do anything and your armor will just kill everything around you, but just supplemental damage. Defense Drone has a really short range, so maybe make it so that the tech armor's effects have much longer range, and they also have, you know, are, are more powerful in, in whatever way. Or, like I said, powers within powers, maybe you can get a... like a, a holographic rocket launcher or something on your left hand that you can, rather than having a, a, a detonation, rather than detonating the armor, instead you get the ability to shoot that rocket launcher, and it has a cooldown, and whatever. But maybe it's like grenades, and it doesn't actually trigger a cooldown. Like, the ability, you can't... It has a cooldown, the actual ability, but it doesn't actually trigger the global cooldown. Sort of thing. Now, that's kind of difficult in terms of systems, because you just have the one indicator of your cooldowns. You wouldn't have two. Maybe there's a way around... That's, that's just an idea. I think a lot of players miss being able to use heavy weapons... ...at times, throughout, you know, the mission or whatever. Grenades kind of replaced heavy weapons, but maybe make the grenade launcher kind of like the heavy weapon grenade launcher in the previous game, or, or just different in its own way, you know, more interesting than it was. Commander, just just an idea. Or like an individual missile launcher or something. You heard her. Back to the truck, people. Maybe even eventually... <sighs> yeah, I'm going to just skip all the plot. What else could it could it be? Well, I talked about this to a very small extent, but I really wish that players had access to the Shadow Broker from the Shadow Broker DLC, Player of the Shadow Broker DLC. I wish they had access to his huge-ass shield ability. So, however you're going to go about doing that, it's kind of like Tech Armor. It's different, but it's kind of like it. Can I, can I have that? That'd be awesome. That'd be great. Something like that, maybe. I mean, I feel like there's a lot of things you could do. I've only thought about this for maybe 10 minutes. It's not as if I spent have spent days thinking about this. I really haven't, for the most part. I mean, you could even have something as simple as, like, a group tech armor, so that your party members gain the effects of tech armor. Only you could send party members into close quarters and then detonate your armor, and it detonates everybody's armor all at once. And if you're close together, to increased effect. Like a chain detonation effect or something. Make it do more damage, make it... I don't know, have an amplified effect of some kind, both visually and mechanically. Graphically, you know, something that just looks powerful and winds up being powerful. It'll just take out a lot of opponents. Here's an idea. Whenever you cast a power, a party member, or maybe both party members, that might be a little too much, cast a duplicate power that is at half effectiveness. So if you cast 
Overload, they cast Overload at the same time if you cast a bonus power. And I realize we're getting far out there, but this is... I'm trying to make a group armor that's interesting, so maybe it even affects bonus powers. If you use a defense drone, they use a defense drone. You know, maybe you have three defense drones running around, or multiple grenades. You know, you throw a grenade, they throw a grenade. Something like that. I don't know. Just an idea. I mean, those these ideas might be difficult to implement. They do substantially change the ability for the most part. But in its current form, I just feel it's really boring. If nothing else, the detonation effect needs to be substantially changed to be something far more powerful and just far more interesting, I feel. And I already talked about that to an extent. But what do you guys think? I mean, what, what are your ideas as to how tech armor could be changed? I mean, I also talked about how I wish you could customize it a bit more and change the color of it, maybe. Or should it just be left alone? Should... Uh, is it fine as it is? My modular idea, like you add weapon systems to it, what kind of made me think of that was just Ballistic Blades is kind of like that. Ballistic Blades almost looks like you're adding a, a gun to your arm and you know, you're shooting the blades. So... That's kind of what I'm going for. Only with, you know, something else, some other weapon systems. Maybe even like a targeting system. An evolution where, kind of like hunter mode. It's an evolution where it adds targeting systems to it. And it maybe not only lets you just see enemies through cover and smoke and whatever, but also reduces recoil on weapons as opposed to marksmen. So kind of like hunter mode combining with an effect that I wish marksmen had, but without the penalties of using marksman that dramatically you know it has a long cooldown and hunter mode i think makes you take more damage or something though it also makes you move faster so it wouldn't have that advantage but you could make it maybe have that advantage only it would be a separate evolution make it add like gyros or something to it that allow you to just move faster that might be interesting allow you to be a lot more mobile just all the time and not something overpowered but just lets you be more mobile just different different aspects to what you might perceive would be in power armor or in, you know, a Star Wars bounty hunter's armor. Different equipment choices. And the evolutions allow you to just mix and match those to suit your playstyle. Do you want to be more of a long-range guy, more of a powers guy, more of a melee guy? That's really up to you. But I, I guess that's all I will talk about it. And we're coming to a close here. This is, we're nearing the end. This is the final thing. This was annoying. Again, I really wish I had saved the missile launcher for this part of the fight. It would have made it a lot easier. I really just wanted to hide in a corner the entire time. I had no desire to kill the Banshees. It was going to take too long. It was honestly just too much effort. I couldn't be asked to bother. And I wanted to just wait for the... The missile launcher to become available. The big one, the actual truck. So I could just finish it. But it just really didn't work out that way, and I had to actually put forth some effort to beat this thing. Pretty sure I'm going to die, for one. And then I think I will succeed. It was actually an interesting victory as well. I'm almost out of Metagel anyway. There's an idea. Maybe your tech armor, another modular choice, it has a Metagel dispenser. And when you're about to die, it automatically uses Metagel, but it doesn't tie you up with the Metagel animation. But it would have to have a long internal cooldown. It would have to be, you know, minutes. Maybe even, like, five... Probably five minutes. Three to five minutes. If not longer. Internal cooldown. So it... It would save you, but just part of the time. And when I say modular, each of these is an individual evolution. You don't get everything. Maybe even, like, a vocalization where it gives you an alarm system, like, you are being flanked! Something like that. Enemy closing in. So you can't get caught off guard. Just something to help you with situational awareness, even. Okay, and this was interesting. The Reaper killed him. Killed her. <laughs> the Reaper's laser beam actually killed the Banshee. I was not aware that he could do that. That definitely made my life easier. So definitely got lucky there. I was really surprised that that just happened, as a matter of fact. And I don't know where the last one is. I think they're all just kind of dealing with my party members right now. I think the other one is trying to attack Liara or something. Not totally sure. But at this point, I feel like this is going to be the victory, so I am just trying my best. 
So, in summary, just change tech armor so it benefits different playstyles that it fundamentally changes the Sentinel and is something that you actually care about and don't just put on once and just never think about again. And make the evolutions each matter and make a real difference and let players actually specialize when they make choices. Be it the modular thing I was talking about, be it half the, the trees, half the choices are geared towards biotics, half of them are geared towards tech. Maybe change up the melee, fundamentally, to really allow you to melee. I mean, they are a very tanky character. You'd think they would be more interested in melee than they actually are. No, before I win, I will kill you, you freaking marauder. Then I will flee. Flee! Or my idea with a just double weapon sort of thing, or the double shields thing. That's substantial, and I think pretty cool myself. Maybe I'm wrong. Regardless, I'm about to win. And then I'm going to dance into the night. And that's it, guys. So, and this was my Sentinel playthrough. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Please like the video, like my episodes if you did enjoy them. It helps people find them on YouTube, helps them find my playthroughs. Please sub if you'd like to see more Mass Effect 3. Next up will be my Infiltrator playthrough. And... Leave feedback and comments, and I will respond. The YouTube inbox kind of sucks ass, so it doesn't let me keep as up-to-date as I'd like. Alright guys, stay tuned for more, and have a good one.